Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Cumin 10 in a three minute pool in ICC. Let's play Scandinavian. So, I've lost my last couple Blitz games, but uh, they've been pretty fun. Especially that last one. Um, I'm playing a mainline Scandinavian against Cumin 10. Bishop d2 would be the normal move. e6, and now knight d5 is the theoretical continuation. Let's check this guy's stats real quick. He's an anonymous Grandmaster. Peak rating of 2500 in a three minute pool. Here, Bishop b3 is the move. Okay, this is actually the move that Humpy Koneru played against me uh, in the 15-minute pool about a month or so back. Knight h4. Okay, let's... Mm, yeah, let's play bishop g6. I was debating whether bishop e4 made sense, but... How will they continue? I mean, they could take my bishop, but for some, for some reason I doubt they're going to do that. Next I'll play bishop d6 just to gain a tempo on their h-pawn. Sometimes they play to transfer the queen to h3. They're not going to do that anymore. Okay, let's castle queenside. Castling kingside would be too too dangerous. So we're not going to do that. Uh, maybe c5? Yeah, it looks alright. If d5, they give up control of e5. So I can jump my knight in. And otherwise, I'm just hoping to take this pawn on d4. It's nice to play an opening that you're very familiar with in these games. Um, since three minute, it's it's even more important to manage the clock than in other time controls. Uh, so their idea is if I take, they're going to play c5 and just try to mow me over. Mm, we better play like this against that move. Just hide our king a bit. We'll still keep open the option of taking, but I don't like taking when my king is exposed along the file. Okay, so again, if takes c5 is the idea... Hmm. Knight b6, maybe they go bishop a5. Hmm. Is taking it all possible? Take c5. Knight takes b4 is the issue. I get some interesting material for that, though. Also, f6 becomes weak if I take. So I probably shouldn't do that. Hmm. Take c5. What about knight e5? I can take f6 in that case, but I have bishop back. Take here, knight e5. It might be interesting. Let's try that. Hmm. Not sure he saw that coming either. Well, maybe he did. <laughs> so what is he going to do? Put the bishop on f4 and pin me? Or play c6 and just, just barrel through down the file? I'm eager to see. This is a complicated position. Okay, so... Huh. Knight d3, maybe? Attack the rook? My knight's a little bit out there, though. Bishop d3 I could play. Let's do bishop d3. I'm sick of this knight like attacking my, my bishop there. Maybe knight c4 could happen. Maybe. I can transfer my bishop. How about that? So bishop coming to c6 now. Made its way all the way from the king side to the queen side. Bishop transfer. Got to watch our time. We're getting a little low. Hmm. Very complex position. Uh, let's go... Hmm. Can't really get out of that so easily. Okay, let's go to g8. We'll, we'll swap with them. Swap the light square bishops if they want. I think they're just going to throw themselves at us on the queen side. I don't really see any other course of operations for them. B6, huh? Just going to take stuff. Rook B1 makes sense. Knight back. Okay. Keep trading. Well, my king is weak. There's no doubt about that. But for the moment, it's sufficiently defended. Um, let's go d3. Let's cut off their queen. Rook c8. See if we can swap. Let's go bishop d4. 
So I don't want this rook to move because I can get mated on b7. Hmm. Mm, can they do that? I have this move though. Check. Maybe they just ignore it. King there. Wow. Can you really do that? I think they can. Time warning. Oh man. Okay, let's do this. Not sure what else to do. So I'm threatening to take their bishop. I couldn't take it last move because they take d5. Wow, this is complicated. With this little amount of time left. I can go queen c6 next move. He's just playing for the end game, it looks like. Check. Yeah, I think I'm going to get this. Yeah, I think I got this one. All right, so we went on time. Yeah, woo, survived that ending sequence right there with uh, the pin, the queen sitting on g2. Tricky. Okay, let's take a look. So we had our tried and trusted Scandinavian defense. And castling Check. on this move, move number 10, is not the theoretically challenging line, but like I said, I did have that in my game against Humpy Konaru. Uh, in the 15-minute pool a while back, she chose that line as well. So usually they play bishop e3 to guard the c2 pawn. And then after knight d7, queen e2, queen c7, castle, castle, knight h4, white plays this way. Bishop g6, g3, and tries to go knight g2 and push the h pawn. Um, there's a Ponomaryov game that's kind of the seminal game in that variation. But castles, knight d7, knight h4, bishop g6 here. And even though it looks like white's castling into a semi-attack semi on the g-file, it's not so easy for black to organize pressure immediately. It takes several moves to do that. Many moves, really. Um, and in the meantime, white gets to push their queenside pawns, as you saw in the game. I'm going to add the engine right around here. So I castled long. They played c4. I went c5 because I don't want them to be able to play c5 and cramp my dark square bishop. That's not on the agenda for me. So therefore, I played c5, and they went here. And maybe I could get away with taking, but I just wasn't comfortable with this. I don't like the fact that c6 can be played next move. <laughs> the engine says, what are you worried about? c6, and now knight e5. Wow. Check. Take, and I assume king b8. And if he takes my queen, I take his with check, and I then take the rook, and I'm maybe winning material. I guess they might have bishop a5 at the end, but black comes out on top of this. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's not a natural continuation to make. King b8 is a more human move. So here, and now I did decide to take, because I saw this c5 and knight 5 idea. I somehow felt this must be good for me. But, um, you know, when the clock is ticking in a three-minute game and you're getting attacked on one wing, um, you're never completely certain. So if they take on f6, I can play the bishop back to e7 and attack this knight as well. So if queen f4, just bishop takes h4. Aha. Uh -huh. And then the queen can't take because of knight f3 with the fork on the king and the queen. If g takes, then I'd probably play something like rook g8, I bet. But it looks really good for black. Now white's king is completely exposed. So they went back to g2, a more sensible square. Bishop e7, b4. And this was a nifty bishop maneuver. Maybe I missed some even better moves, like f5 is good here, just trying to take. Ah, yeah, that looks strong, because if knight f3, I have bishop b4, threatening the knight, pressure on the diagonal. Mm -hmm. So bishop c6, uh, bishop b5, trying to go to c6. Bishop f4, here. Queen f1, I played rook g8, just on principle, trying to line up my rook with their king. So if I can destroy this knight, then I'm in great shape because of the knight f3 threat. But he's coming after me. He's not letting me do that. Nor is there... I mean, I guess I could play rook g4. Rook takes h4. I didn't really have a chance for that in the game, I don't think. He just kept distracting me on the queen side. And now we're both below a minute. I think it's kind of a free-for-all. It's anyone's game. I thought he was going to play rook a b1. But he did what? Knight f3? Yeah, I'm pinned. I can't take it. So bishop d6. I just tried to um, get out of the pin. And now I'm up two pawns, but... Had like 37 seconds left. He had a slim time advantage. It's just trying to make sense of my position and consolidate. Like maybe offer a trade or two. Rook c8. He did this. This was a clever idea. 
because he noticed the pin. I mean, he was definitely playing off this pin of the rook on d5 to the pawn on b7. Here, bishop f4, e5, he takes. I Check. take on f2. And this works great, like if he takes with his queen, because then I can do this. There's no mate on b7. Uh, likewise, if king takes, I can go rook c2 check. check, like skewering his king and queen. But um, much to my horror, he played just king h1, the cool king h1. <laughs> and now it's like, there's so many pieces hanging. Like, we both have our rook and bishop, like, basically hanging. But due to all the threats, I can't take anything. If I take the rook, I get mated. If I take the bishop, he just takes on d5. So, fortunately, I was able to quickly play rook d8. And it's like mutually assured destruction. Like now it's the same thing for him. If he takes my bishop, I take his rook and there's no mate. Um, if he takes my queen, I get to do this and trade queens with him. And I can milk my two-pawn advantage. My two-pawn advantage still remains. Um, yeah, and this is actually what happened, isn't it? Yeah. Could he do something insane like rook b5? Looks pretty cool. I guess it's not good. The idea would be to put even more pressure on this. Again, because I can't play rook takes d3, but I guess I have a refu refutation here, and then rook b1. Check. And he comes to grief on the on the back rank. He's going to have to give up his queen. That's a nifty line. Moreover, if he plays like rook d1, well, then I can just simply take here because there's no mate. Yeah, tricky position with like 20 seconds. Yeah. Check. And now with the time disadvantage and black being up two pawns, I felt very confident of the win. And he didn't make it. Wow, okay, complicated Scandinavian game. So uh, add another Grandmaster to the Scandinavian body count. <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.